The Supreme Court seat may be a battle falling down mostly partisan lines, but polls show, as we mentioned, that most Americans want to wait until after the election to fill the Supreme Court vacancy, but are also against backing the court after the election. For more on that, let's bring in 538 editor-in-chief Nate Silver. Nate, you looked at 12 different polls asking whether Ginsburg's seat should be filled by President Trump or should be filled after the, president, uh, after the election. What did you find? So for the most part, people would prefer to wait until after the election. Um, it obviously tracks with preference for the presidential vote overall. If you're a Trump voter, you might say fill it now. If you're a Biden voter, you'd say fill it later. Um, for right now, there are more Biden voters than Trump voters in polls. Biden is leading by seven or eight points in the average national poll. Um, the march on the court might be a bit wider than that, but it all kind of comes down to the same partisan framework you see for almost every question these days. Now, some have suggested that the next president could increase the number of justices on the court. We heard Deborah Perlstein elaborate on that a little bit. What do the polls say about that? Generally an unpopular move. Americans are kind of change resistant. We all grew up with a Supreme Court that would be nine justices large. Um, but what Democrats will argue is that the only way to get our agenda passed uh, is to expand the size of the court. Um, so it's a fairly new opinion a new idea for a lot of people right now. So sometimes if you have new ideas, um, the tide can shift, but for the time being, it's not a super popular move. And shifting gears, how could this issue of Trump taxes affect the race? It's a bit early to say. I mean, look, the president is behind in polls now by a margin of, like I said, seven or eight points, a bit closer, maybe four or five points in the swing states. Um, so he needs to have a lot of favorable developments happen for him over the remaining 40 days of the campaign. He has to win debates. He has to have the Supreme Court battle work in his favor. Um, so anytime you have a story that is negative for Trump and it may cause people to question, okay, how fair is this? How wealthy is the president actually? Um, you know, he doesn't want to be playing defense when he has to, has to make up this decently sizable deficit. So again, it's anybody's guess for right now, um, but there's downside risk for, for President Trump. Now, this election is likely going to come down to a handful of battleground states. What are polls in those states telling you? They show a bit tighter race in the national polls, um, although it depends on which state you look at. Um, Wisconsin and Michigan are states that were very key last time. Biden actually has fairly large leads in those states, as many as seven or eight points. Um, on the other hand, Florida, a state that he also lost last time, might hope to make a comeback with older voters, is only up maybe two points there. Um, Right now, what we call the tipping point state, the most pivotal state, is Pennsylvania, where Biden is up by maybe five points in polls. Um, that is a state right now that would be decisive in the Electoral College. So although Trump might have this nice deficit nationally, Biden having a nice lead, lead nationally, I should say, it's more like five points in Pennsylvania, which is the most important state for the time being. All right. Nate Silver for us from 538. Thanks, Nate. Definitely. Thank you. Hey, folks, I predict that you're going to either subscribe to our YouTube channel or watch some related videos or both. Um, you can do both, but you can't do neither. So either subscribe or watch more videos.